Hello, I'd, I'd like to start with my name is Matt Davis. Uh, I was asked to give my testimony on men's fraternity and, and what it's done for me in my life and the way it's impacted me. Uh, I went through men's fraternity the first time in May of 2009. I had the opportunity to attend it and since then the Lord's given me the opportunity to uh, lead it three times. And I've been through the second one twice the uh, Winning at Work and Home series. It, men's fraternity is a, is a powerful, powerful tool that the Lord uses to bring men out of misidentification and into true identity of who they are. Uh, you might, many of you be saying, well, I know Matt Davis and I've known him and you know, who is he to be giving a talk about men's fraternity and what it is to have, uh, to walk in biblical manhood. And I understand that. Uh, I'm 41 years old and I spent the biggest majority of my life not walking in manhood, not knowing exactly what manhood was and, and what I should be doing. Uh, I spent my younger years abusing alcohol and, to, and uh, tobacco and, and women and just not doing things the way I should have done. And later on in life after I got married, I would abuse alcohol and, and I abused my work. Uh, I would do things that uh, weren't, uh, weren't exact, exactly ethical to do and you know it was uh it was all in the name of, of being a man i thought and doing what we what we in america believe is manhood just uh you know searching out what we should be doing and and, and how we should be doing it a lot of times in uh i know in my life particularly uh we're asked you know to, to be the man to be a man, we send our children out to be men. We send our sons out and we tell them to be men, but we never give them an example of what manhood is. And that's what men's fraternity does. It gives you an example of what biblical manhood is and what it looks like. And you know, we say be the man, but scripture never tells us to be the man. Scripture tells us to play the man. In 1 Corinthians 11, Paul put it this way. He said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. We can only imitate someone that we know how he done it. And so we have to look at the life of Jesus Christ to know how he lived out biblical manhood. Webster's Dictionary will give a definition, a two to four point definition of any word that you look up, there will be a two to four point definition of it. And manhood is the same thing. Biblical manhood, there are four points to biblical manhood. The first is you reject passivity. The second is you accept responsibility. The third is you lead courageously. And then the fourth point is we do it all for the greater reward, which is God's reward. And in doing so, we learn that we have a target. You know, no one, and men in particular, we like to shoot guns and things. I said no man would take a scope and put it on a gun and then take the gun and try to set the scope in without a target. But how many times do we as men send, send our boys out and ourselves, we go out into the world, and we're trying to hit a target, but we don't know what the target is. And these four points give you the target of manhood that when you go out, you have a focused target to aim at and project yourself into. I, I can't, I'm not telling you that I'm 100% walking in this all the time, but I am telling you that I use this definition to, to be my guide during the day. There have been many times that I've had to go back and say, you know, I'm sorry for something I've done because... The Lord will ask me, did you reject passivity in that moment to do the right thing, or did you lead courageously? And it's just a, a, a standard that I have now, thanks to this program and what the Lord has done through it, that I can go back and, and say, did I hit the mark today, or did I miss the mark? It's a standard that the Lord has helped me to use in my home in the raising of my 16-year-old son. He has this... Uh, he has this definition on his wall. It's a four-point definition that he puts on his wall. Many times I've used this definition to call him up and, and to say, Son, are you walking in this today? It's something that I use for my daughter that, that later on when she starts to look for a husband or she starts looking for boyfriends or something, I can say, Is he a man? Is he a man of God? These are the definitions that he needs to line up with. And in doing so, I can, I can help guide her into the right uh, mate for her in her life. It's something that I use in my home as far as my relationship with my wife. Something I use in my in my church, in leadership, in my business, and, and with employees and things like that. To say, am I doing today what, what I need to do? 
it's the greatest call of America, I believe today, is men walking in true identity of who they are. Biblical manhood. This men's fraternity program will spend the first part of it looking at men, looking at you personally, and why you are the way you are, and what made you the way you are. In men's fraternity, we like to say that uh, every man carries a suitcase, and how you unpack the suitcase determines how you live out your life. I, like, I look at it like this. All men that uh, are watching this, that will be watching this program, you're in one or two categories. You're either men that are, that are wounded and are struggling with your wounds still, or you're men that were wounded and you've allowed the Lord to heal those wounds and now you're walking in true identity. And, and every man needs to take a look at the suitcase he carries and unpack it and say, this is what I want to carry from here on out and this is what I don't want to carry. So men's fraternity gives you an opportunity to unpack your suitcase and say these are the things I want to go forward with and these are the things I want to put behind me and not carry anymore. So that's the first part of it. The second part of it is when you spend looking at, at the life of Jesus Christ and how he lived out biblical manhood and how he ex he done these things, these four points in every area of his life. He lived those things out. He rejected passivity. He led courageously. He accepted responsibility and he done it all for a greater reward which is God's reward. And we look at how your great-great-granddaddy Adam dropped the ball and how we all, being born into Adam, have that tendency as men to want to drop the ball and not do the things that we should do. But now that we're in Christ, we, we want to know that we can walk in that authority that He gives us in Christ. And there's small group time to men's, men's fraternity. Men's fraternity is a great and powerful program if you use the program. You must, you must put the program to work. And small group time is where you put the program to work. There's a, I know as, as men we don't like to get together and talk and open up and share our hearts with one another a lot of times. But men, that's where the healing is, is at, is in the small group time. Use that small group time at men's fraternity to connect with other men and, and to grow. You know, we're, uh, we've done real good in the church of saying that we confess our sins to God and He's faithful and just to forgive them. And He is. He, he's, that's what He does. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, He forgives our sins and remembers them no more. But the Bible also says in James 5 that we are to confess our sins one to another so that we may be healed. And it's in that confession one to another that we receive the, the true healing and freedom to walk in, in, in authority and come out of misidentification. And that's what we want to do in men's fraternity is encourage each other to just get right with the Lord and get right with each other and have accountability with one another. It's, uh, I'm telling you, it's, it is the great call of, of America to have men walk in true identity. Uh, as I've shared before, and many of you might have heard these statistics, but, uh, you know, we, we in America, we put great focus on, on youth and other things in the church. But it's the men in the church that we need to call out. Statistics will prove that a family of four that goes to a revival, and, and if that family of four, if, if the young, if the teenage son or daughter is one to Christ, we have a less than 7% chance of winning the family of four. And if the mother of that family of four is one to Christ, we have a 17% or less chance that the family of four will come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But statistics will prove that if the father of that family of four is one to Jesus Christ, there is a 97% chance that the whole family of four will come to know the Lord and Savior as G their Lord and Savior. I mean, that's where it's at. Is it, it's with the men. We need to call them out and, and just encourage our, each other to, to be men and to walk in true identity. And uh, like I said, men's fraternity, it's a great program that the Lord uses to heal men. But it's only a program if you don't use it. And uh, I encourage you to get involved and to, and to step up and to just join this, join this program. I'm excited for you at Emmanuel Church for, for starting this. I look forward to hearing what the Lord's done for you as I know what it's done in my life. How it's called me up and, and helped me to, to uh, come out of misidentification of what a man should be and what it should uh, not be. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll share this story right quick, and, and, I, and I like this, like this explanation. There's a, there's a story of, of a herd of elephants in Africa that was uh, 
poached and slaughtered to the, basically the point of nearly extinction. All the males were killed for their tusks. And uh, they rescued the young, the young elephants and they took them into a community. And this community of elephants, of small elephants, as they grew up, they were rambunctious and they, they tore up everything that they were around. And uh, they just couldn't do anything to control these young elephants. And they didn't know exactly what to do. They tried everything. And uh, one person said, you know, maybe what we need is, is an older elephant to show them something. So they went out and they captured a bull elephant and they put him in this herd of small elephants. And the next day, immediately, this herd of elephants that were rambunctious and tearing up the whole community and there was nothing they could do to control them. When they put the one bull in the, in the herd, immediately the herd of elephants settled down and they began to behave as mature elephants. I guess what I'm saying is we need some bulls in our community. We need some men that will rise up and say, you know, I want to be that example for the, this younger generation coming up. I'm not going to do it perfectly, but I'm going to set a standard, and that standard is Jesus Christ. And I'm going to step in this situation and do what I can to make it right. I'm proud of you for this. I'm proud of you for starting. I encourage you and I believe in you. Bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you.